So inside the box here, so you can see the box there, you get this information sheet and this is something that you get with uh, most knife purchases from Knifeware. And your information sheet and on the back it, there are some care instructions as well. You get this uh, quality assurance label telling you who made the knife and who sharpened the knife and this 5 yen coin. Now I asked about that and the reason why they give the 5 yen coin is because in Japanese tradition when you give a knife to somebody as a gift you are indicating that you wish to sever the relationship with them. So by having the 5 yen coin you are breaking that notion that you're severing the, the tie with them. What you're doing is you're, you're offering it as a gift. So the 5 yen coin is important to go along with the knife. This knife is finished in a Kudo Uchi finish. Kudo means black. And it's also a hammered finish called Tsuchime. So Tsuchime and Kudo Uchi combined give you the impression of river pebbles. And river pebbles in Japanese means Koishi. So that's why this line of knives is called the Koishi line. Let's talk about steels for a moment. Now this knife is made with an Ayogami Super which is a uh, blue steel and what they do is they mix in molybdenum and vanadium to create the steel and it has some of the longest edge lives of any steel and for that reason a lot of knife manufacturers will choose to make their knives using Algami Super. I really like this knife. A lot of thought went into the making of this knife. The handle is made of cherry wood and the ferrule is made of paka wood. And nice, one nice thing about Masakage knives is that they can be used by a left-handed or right-handed person. And most of their knives will be made of this hexagon or octagon, in this case an octagon handle. Or they'll use a round handle or a western style handle. As far as I know, you won't see a D-shaped handle on any mas masakaka knife. Um, a D-shaped handle would only work for either a right-handed or a left-handed person. So they want to make it easy for their customers by incorporating handles that can be used by both left- and right-handed users. Another element that I really like is that it is balanced right around where my finger is, as you can see. Okay. And I like it right there because I like to use what's called a pinch grip. So my finger usually goes there and my middle finger goes in this part here. Um, but basically there's no bolster here, which makes it easy for sharpening, which I really like as a sharpener. And so the knife effortlessly balances right there. If you choose to hold it here, you can do that too. But uh, for the best control, I find that holding a knife right here and using a pinch grip is ideal. Now by comparison, this knife here by Henkos, and this is a fairly nice Friodor, which is part of my collection. It does have a bolster, which I don't like because when I'm sharpening, it makes it hard to sharpen this part of the knife. And the balance point is towards the back of the handle as you can see. So that's fine if I'm putting my finger right where the back of the bolster is. So from that perspective it's balanced in that sense. But once I start using a pinch grip like I am showing here where my middle finger is behind the bolster, now the knife is back heavy. So it's not balanced anymore. And here's another Henkel's knife. Which, this is a Santoku. And it's balanced right there. And this one actually is a little better in terms of applying a pinch grip because it's right in, in the right position. So if I was to reference this knife 
and this knife to the Kyoto, I would say this would be a more similar weight balance. Now, if you're looking for your first knife, I'd recommend a Kyoto or a Santoku, which is a three virtues knife, meaning you can cut vegetables, fish, and meat with the same knife. I imagine you can do the same with this knife too, but um, a Kyoto is really similar to that of a Western chef knife. And that's the reason why I chose to buy this one. I also have a Nakiri, but uh, that'll be in another video. And this is a Santoku, which is the three virtues knife. So I'm gonna weigh this knife for you guys. It weighs 136 grams. This Santoku is 160 grams. And the Friel door Henkels is 276 grams. Now these two knives are stainless steel, of course. And this one is carbon steel clad with stainless steel. So it's a fairly light knife compared to these two. Like the Friodor is a chef knife is basically double the weight of the Japanese knife. So if you've got tendonitis um, and you're looking for a sharp but light knife for your hands, um, you can consider getting getting one of these Kyoto's or, or one of the other uh, Japanese brands. Now one nice thing about this knife is that they've clad or forge the carbon steel with a layer of stainless steel on the top and the bottom. And you can see the line right there where the stainless steel meets the carbon steel. So the stainless steel won't rust, but the carbon steel will. But because it's such a thin edge here, being only, well, less than a centimeter, at the thickest point. All you simply need to do is wipe it down after each use. One thing worth mentioning, and I really like this, um, it is, this is off the information sheet here, right where my, the tip of my knife is. So I thought I'd share it with you. It says that you shouldn't use the knife on anything that you would not bite with your own teeth. So bones, thick twigs from herbs, frozen food you should never touch this knife with any of those items because you will damage that very sharp edge and if you chip it it's going to be really tough to get it out it is possible I've, I've repaired straight razors and knives myself but there's going to be metal that has to be removed and like you could lose a few millimeters off your edge if you damage it so it's better to be safe than sorry and one thing to note with carbon steel knives is that when you use it to cut anything acidic such as lemons, limes, oranges, even onions and tomatoes, you run the risk that the carbon steel edging right at the tip there will stain. It's not necessarily going to ruin it, but uh, the oxidation will cause it to darken and you'll see it. So it just aesthetically speaking, it, it might affect the knife in that manner. Um, but it'll still cut just as fine. So the best thing to do is right after you finish using it, just give it a quick wipe. And some sushi chefs or Japanese chefs, you'll see them actually wiping the blade every single time they put the knife down on their cutting board. So that's, that's a good strategy or a tip for, for home users as well. So it's Father's Day weekend and in my family when we celebrate Father's Day, we normally will do a potluck. So everyone prepares a dish. This year I've decided to make ratatouille. A ratatouille consists of five core vegetables. You've got your eggplant, zucchini, pepper or capsicum, onion, and tomato. So this is going to give me a great opportunity to 
brush up on my knife skills. Not that they're lacking, but um, I'll be able to use this knife, which I'm kind of excited about. And I'm gonna film a bit of that and show you how I prepare this dish, okay? From my very first cut, I was saying to myself, holy shit, this knife is sharp. Being a straight razor sharpener and a sharpener of knives, I can honestly say out of the box, this knife is on par with some of the knives that I sharpen and I'm really impressed with it. So we're on to zucchini. 